On today's episode of Watch Jargo, you need to pull the engine out of the bottom of your car, but you don't want to spend a lot of money. This is how you do it. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jargo and today I am here with the Harbor Freight 1000 pound, uh, I don't even know what they call this thing, table car, hydraulic table car. And this, is kind of like a package dolly or it'll let you load whatever you want in the back of your truck. It's really there for, you've got something heavy, you have to lift it by yourself. So you can start nice and low on the ground and then just jack it up with the hydraulic lift cylinder in the middle here and load it into the back of your truck or whatever you need. It gets pretty high. It comes almost level with the top of this handle here. So we're almost all the way up. We'll see in just a second, it'll stop. This was one crazy Harbor Freight run. Uh, we got a lot of new toys here. So right about here, I think, is the top. So 36 inches, maybe. It just keeps going. Every time I say it's almost at the top. It just keeps going and going. All right, there you go. So that is all the way up. And our game plan is to get the car's cradle and engine sitting on this thing. And then we can just hit the handle here and down she goes and it will honestly uh a lot of those engine stands won't move fast this will move incredibly fast so that's your release right there that handle but the issue with this is it's not built to do what i need to do so we got to flip the handle around uh they want the handle to fold up so it sits flat and it stores nicely i obviously do not want it to store nicely i want a huge surface with no handle in the way so what we're going to do first is take this thing back apart flip the handle over so it folds uh, away from the stand, and then we should have plenty of clearance to do what we need to do. All you need to do this job is a 14 millimeter and the included Allen wrench that looks like a five, possibly a six. Um, just pop these bolts out and the handle should flip right over. Flipping the handle isn't as straightforward as it seems. We had to go a little muddy fi And what I did was take my mini cutoff wheel here, cut a little slit in the retainer that holds this cable. And now I'm going to spread that out so I can pull the cable out. After spreading that out, the cable came right out. So now I'm good to go. Everything reaches and the bolt holes line up again. I'm gonna do a quick test. I'm gonna start the screws and see if the handle flips down. If it doesn't, we're gonna route the cable a little nicer. We're gonna move it inside the little step bar that lets you release the handle. If it works like this, we'll just tighten down all the bolts. And if it doesn't, I guess we keep right on modifying. Time to get the zip tie off here so we can clean up the look a little bit. There we go. That's off. And now let's test out our modifications. This thing out of the way. Yeah, look at that. That works perfectly. I can move my engine all the way up and down. The handle flips out of the way and we still have complete control over the jack. So. All you have to do is cut this little ring open and I even take a look at it, pushed it back together so it looks nice and complete and won't like snag on your clothes or anything that touches it, hopefully. I'm gonna tighten it all down. Our engine table is ready to go. And to help us get the engine out of here, we have a bunch of new lights. So you guys can tell me if these flicker on camera. This is the new Icon system, the Underhood uh, rechargeable floodlight system. They've got three modes. So there's low, middle, high and high is extremely bright, as you guys can see. If we wanna take a look inside something here and we bring this light over, there's light off, light on. Man, that thing rocks. USB-C rechargeable and a USB output to charge your phone. That's pretty sweet. Uh, let's open up the entire system so we have the light bar that stretches across the car. Got it all put together and here's a really cool feature. The Icon one will sit on the ground like that so you have uh, up lighting when you're working on your lift. How awesome is that? You guys know I have the Milwaukee underhood light, which is a big uh, continuous light bar and it will not sit on the ground. You have to pull the bar out and like just lay the bar on the ground and try to rotate it till it works. Uh, this thing just happens to work and uh, these rotate and they lock into position. You slide them with this little release and you can extend it with this release. So honestly, I think this is a pretty cool system and it might make uh, seeing things under the car quite a bit easier. And now that we're coming out the bottom, I just had to pull the two main connectors that run the entire engine. And of course, that's this one right here, which you just use a, an eight. And this one, that's a cam lock that you just flip open and pull all the wires out of the way and just throw them in the valley there. So 
it looks like we've got all the wiring off the engine and transmission that easily and now i just need to unhook the power steering pump and the ac compressor and we can start dropping this thing out in the drive shaft so i've got a few things on my to-do list we'll jump to the drive shaft first it's the easiest one to figure out and then i'll just keep sorting through to find any other lines that are connected to the engine and we can start dropping the suspension out of this thing Ooh, it looks like we need to pull the electronics for the shocks too so oh well that was that was difficult we're gonna have to uh pull the ac uh, machine out and go ahead and suck this thing down at least we can recover all of its refrigerant found our service ports we've got the machine hooked up and it is in recovery so it is ripping the refrigerant out of here. This shouldn't take long at all. We can unhook and then start breaking lines loose. And of course, I'll probably find some more coolant to uh, get drenched in as always, but we're just gonna start unhooking hoses. The air conditioning is recovered. We got 1.1 pounds out of it, which I think is pretty low, honestly. Uh, it's 700 grams plus minus 25. I think 700 grams is like 1.5 pounds. Don't quote me on that. I could be way off, but uh, it seems low. seems like it was pretty low, and it seems like there's UV dye in the AC system. So somebody's been looking for a leak at some point in this car's life. It was working, though. It was cold the few seconds I tried it out. All right, let's get this engine out of here now that we can just start unhooking things. After a bunch of work, we've got the exhaust off, the heat shields off. I gotta tell you guys, the exhaust is an absolute nightmare. I probably worked on that for 30 minutes and I talked to my Jag tech and he said, there's no reason it shouldn't just slip right off. Well, I figured out why it didn't just slip right off. There was a gasket in here and that gasket was coming apart. It's some kind of slide in gasket that fits inside the clamps. Eventually they disintegrated and I was able to slide that thing out and out of the car. After that, all the heat shields came out of the tunnel, and now we've got the drive shaft exposed, so it's time to drop the drive shaft. Uh, we're gonna jump right in and do that right now. And I've also got the upper control arms off, and uh, the upright is zip tied back to the shock, so we're ready to pull the shock and ready to start pulling subframe bolts as soon as we get everything else unhooked. So we're getting close, back to the drive shaft. The time has come. I think everything is disconnected from this car. There's a couple hoses left. I know the two hoses to the power steering cooler are definitely left, but everything's off the suspension except for the actual strut assemblies here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those right now. Let's see what happens. And I think if we get this right, we should be basically ready to drop this out. Okay, this is the one that's critical here. The weight bearing bolt. All right, nothing crazy. And round two over here on the driver's side. All right, I don't think there's much else holding this engine in. Let's get this car back up in the air and start pulling out those main bolts on the subframe. The time has come. And unfortunately, this being the cheaper way to do it, we don't have well, Johnny's engine hoist, because it can come up to like here. It can match the lift basically. So that extra insane, I think it's, I think it goes to 64 or 72 inches high. That insane reach that that thing has lets you leave the car at full height. So you can just stand underneath it and work like you would normally. With this, 
we won't be having that easy of a time, but it's gonna get the job done without a fight, I think. So, uh, let's get this thing under here and find out what kind of height we're working with. It honestly looks like the lift is kind of at the height that has to be at, which is only three feet off the floor. So, let's open up our handle, slide this thing back up underneath, and we'll bring this down a hair. I think we're lined up in the center of the car. Now I need to start crimping this up with some wood. So I'm lifting on the subframe and towards the back of the transmission. I'm gonna get as far back as I can. So we have two really nice points of contact. So I like this, this is gonna work out very well. We'll put a couple two by fours in there or one big one and uh, another one across the entire transmission. And I'm gonna start taking out the bolts and then we're gonna lower it just a hair. And as we lower it or lift the car off, we'll start figuring out what's still hooked up, which as far as I can tell, it's just those two hoses. We are ready to do this now. We have the transmission supported. It's supported again on the center. We've got the subframe supported. So I think we are good from uh, the Harbor Freight Jack holding up everything. What we're gonna do now is pull the rear transmission mount off, which is just four 13s. And then we'll move to the front and start pulling the subframe bolts. And we'll find out quickly what's still holding this thing in the car. Hopefully nothing, so. Ooh, that one was in there. And the transmission is definitely free. It just dropped down. Uh, I think the shift cable's right here. I don't know how to unhook that yet. We're gonna get there when we get there. And now that the transmission's out, we're moving on to the subframe, so. I think we got that. There we go. Wow, that is a, that's a big old bolt. Like a 13 inch long bolt. Okay, on to the front one. And I'm gonna get out of here. Oops, I'm gonna stand way back just in case we don't have enough pick points, even though I think we do. Okay, I am out of here. Ooh, she moved. Okay, now while this thing's supporting it. There we go right back in place and we'll pull out the giant bolt another gigantic subframe bolt these must go all the way up into the top of the frame rail that's pretty impressive now for the other side and I think I think we can start bumping the car up so we have our subframe bolts out I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a little bit of a bump down oh my gosh Tried to take everything with it. All right. So I know the radiator is pinned into the subframe. So I think I need to go in there and do a little bit of a wiggle to make sure the radiator comes out. And then we can keep coming down and start trying to fight through the last two hoses that are on the power steering cooler there. Amazing. This honestly may have been easier than using Johnny's. I know it's a lot nicer to stand up, but all the work you have to do to get his factory positioning pins in place is uh, it definitely takes a little while to set all that up. Here are the two hoses. I know it's tough to see. I can come straight in right here and there's two hoses connected to the power steering cooler and I gotta get those clamps off that were fully inaccessible before. But now with the power of the remote hose clamp tool, the clamps are loose. So a little bit of wiggling here and I should have the power steering cooler worked off. If you guys can see, it's tough, but the whole cradle is hanging out underneath the car. We've got about four inches of separation and I do have the hoses off the power steering cooler now. I found one other hose I've got to pull and really what we're gonna do right now is go on a hunt to see if I missed anything. I'm gonna go up in the engine bay, see if we're seeing any wires starting to stretch out. Obviously that's the worst case scenario, but I think we've got everything off. Let's go find out. We're gonna go on the hunt right now, so. Ah! We made it in. Okay. How's it going up here? Shine that right in my face. Yep. Everything seems to be separating. This hose here needs to move so it goes with the engine. All right, that looks good. Uh, it looks like there is one AC line that has to drop and come off the 
back of the compressor. So that's two hoses I gotta remember. Over here, completely clear. Oh man, we are, we are golden. Everything's clear. It's all coming right out. All right, I'm gonna pop that one lower hose and we're gonna bring it down another, I think six inches before we run into trouble. So I can see straight to the bottom, all the way around the engine and I could not ask for more than that. Let's make it happen. We popped our power steering line loose there, or transmission cooler, tough to tell what it was actually, but we're ready, I think. Everything's out of the way. A little bit more, a little bit more. Like I'm gonna hold the car up with my head. I put my, I put my head here in case the car comes for it. Yeah, no big deal, man, I got it. Getting this back in is gonna be a big pain. Because this plastic here covers everything up. All right, all the wires have moved around the cradle now. And this is out of the way. Ooh. I should be getting ready to run, not ready to hold the car up with my head. I heard the suspension dragging, let me move that. All right, one shock out of the way, move the other shock. And now they're in the same spot. Going down. I can see that AC line now. Oh, oh, ho! This thing is out, other than that AC line that I can reach now. There is nothing left. I just got the shift cable off. We're gonna very gently release it. Things are moving. Everything seems to be sliding up. There's our AC lines. I'm gonna go up top and just move some hoses out of the way. But I think the drivetrain is out. Go ahead and go all the way down. Yeah, you got it. I should have said squeeze slow, but you're good. None of this matters at this point. That's it. The engine is out of the jet. Unbelievable. Wow, that, I'd say that was a, twice as easy as it was on my Audi A6. That ended up working incredibly well. So let's go ahead and lift the car out of the way and we can roll our engine out the back. I gotta say, this looks like it went easily, but it was a huge job. As you guys know, it took me quite a few days of pulling things apart before we got to this point. Once it got down to the subframe itself, it was no big deal. Obviously it was pulling the suspension, upper control arm, shocks, the four bolts to hold the subframe, the four bolts to hold the rear transmission mount but so many hoses and wires had to come off. That said, you could have left all the wires. There wasn't, I think, a single wire other than the starter. It's basically the starter, the um, steering angle sensor, I assume is what that is, and uh, what I pulled all the brakes off and I left the brakes up there. So the wheel speed sensors, those had to come off. The entire engine harness can stay on if you just pull those two connectors and flip them over onto the thing, which is pretty mind blowing. So we finally have this thing apart, which means I can finally access these bolts right here. These are the impossible bolts that there was no way I was gonna find uh, a way in before. So I'm gonna soak those with penetrating lube and get them broken loose. And you can see even these ones were a mess. I had a wrench on there and even the wrench was trying to round off. So now, I can pull the shields, I can start pulling the exhaust, I can pull all these O2s out, we can get the exhaust and the trans separated, and from there, we can start, uh, well, we'll have the engine off at that point. So I can finally work on this thing. Uh, it's just time to push it out of the way. So let's do exactly that. Let's push it into a place where I can work. the shift cable. I think the coolest part of this is I can uh, lift the engine up to whatever height I want to work on. She's out. I saw witness marks on all the nuts on the suspension and I was like, why was this out when clearly the engine hasn't been out? 
it's got a lowering springs on it. These are the Velocity VEL004 lowering springs right there. They look brand new, and that's why this thing has such a good stance. Oh, look at that, they're in the back too. Brand new silver springs up there in the back. There you have it, a few interesting things about pulling this engine. The transmission shift cable is actually press fit. There was no nut. I don't know if they're supposed to be, I just noticed there's threads. Maybe somebody had that apart before, but it was literally just sitting on there. There was nothing holding that on. As soon as I pulled off those two bolts, it just fell right off. Um, everything else seemed pretty normal. It came apart easier than most. Pretty. Pretty simple subframe drop. And now we can see all up in the engine bay, uh, what, disconnect the AC up here, pull the AC off the compressor, uh, steering shaft, two bolts. I pulled both of those and slid it back, all things that were really hard to show on camera. But if you're doing this yourself, those are most of my notes. Um, like I said, you don't have to disconnect a single wire other than those two harnesses and the steering angle sensor down there. And make sure the starter's out. I just, I just got coolant all over me um, and you're gonna have to go around that plastic up there in the front there's really no way around that it's plastic riveted in so i just pulled on it and i figure when we go back in i'll just bend it down and shove it back up in there so there you have it that is pulling the engine out of my 2014 jag f-type with just a harbor freight package stand uh, you can see as we kept going down it started to roll forward and i think that's going to be a bit of a nightmare when it goes back in so we have a jack up there in the front and i rolled the subframe back so that the blocks would line back up and it would sit level on our engine stand again. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairgo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Mike, what are we telling these guys? Don't forget to use code watchchairgo at hooters.com for $10 <laughs> off your order. $10 off 30. $10 off 30. What a deal. All right. Well, it's time for us to go eat. We gotta get some food too. Now you guys can eat too, you know the code.